Okay, everyone, welcome. This is another uh, Plein Air Painters Chicago Zoom critique. Tonight, our guest artist is Rich Weber. Rich is one of our painting masters. He did a great demo for us on Saturday at a really cool location, um, Hubbard and Des Plains, which has a uh, Quite a variety, great graffiti, like really excellent graffiti <laughs> and great overpasses. And it's just a nice, funky little area. So, um, Rich, where did you, um, can you tell us a little bit about where you went to school and where you started working? So, yeah, I uh, studied at Northern Illinois University, um, got a BFA in uh, illustration and fine art. Um, went to work uh, downtown Chicago as an illustrator and was freelance down there for quite a few years and uh, moved to the suburbs. And overall, I was freelance for, you know, like 23 to 25 years, somewhere in there. So quite a long time. And where's your, where's the gallery that represents you now? Uh, the gallery I have right now is in Sturgeon Bay. It's called Anticipation, And it's right downtown Sturgeon Bay as you're getting into Door County, Wisconsin. So you do cityscapes, I know, and then you do nature too, obviously. Yeah, I don't. I like to do everything. Um, I'm not going to say I'm good at everything, but I like to do everything. I think as artists, I know my personality is to be a little bit scatterbrained, I guess. <laughs> I work on one thing. If I had to work on florals all day, every day, I don't think I would be happy. You know, so cityscapes, country, um, mix it up I think that's that's the way my mind works so that's what I like to do okay well I'm going to ask you to uh share your screen on the uh, virtual page we okay. can get started we are recording I remember to hit record Rich what was the name of the gallery you're in I'm going to be in Dorkani it's uh, downtown Sturgeon Bay, and it's called Artisipation, A-R-T-I-C-I-P-A-T-I-O-N, something like that. Oh, okay, I'll try to stop in. Okay, yeah, I might be there. I'll be there the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of September. Okay. Will you be there then? I don't know. I whenever I go up there, I have a cabin up there. So whenever I go up there, I usually stop in, you know, a day or two and hang out a little bit and yeah. uh, might be doing, they want me to do more demos there. I have cool. done uh, demos in plain air, like out on the sidewalk before. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but they even want me to just come inside and work because it, people are very interested in the process of, of right. creating the art, you know, that's great. Good for business. It is very mm -hmm. good for business. <laughs> so so can, gonna, you see, can you see oh, my screen now? Yeah, we can see your screen. Just go up to those arrows and um, to, okay, to so make that, not that arrow up top. Okay. Whoops, go back up to the right. There you go. And if I could ask everyone to mute themselves. And the, except for Robin, because she's the first one up. <laughs> and you can stay on, Robin. Yay. So this is uh, Robin Strands, right? That's right. Um, where was this done? This was at uh, Berenstein's uh, home in Pentwater, Michigan, a couple weeks ago. Nice. I really like the use of the uh, the color that you have going on. And uh, the one thing that strikes me about this is your expressive use of, I don't know if it was palette knife work. Did you use some palette knife in here? No, not really, just um, funny brush strokes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as a funny brush stroke. <laughs> um, but I do like the variety of brush strokes that you have going on there. So, so kudos uh, to you for that. You know, you have some drips going on in it. Um, I would have liked to have seen your underpainting. Um, I bet it was loose and it kept it loose, right? Yeah, that was that was the idea. Right. Um, so just a couple comments that I have on this. Um, I think the cattails on the left here, you can see my cursor. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
they seem to be, you know, you have such a nice impressionistic palette going on in here. Uh -oh, did he freeze? And I, I don't know if you use black in your palette. No, that was um, burnt umber. Burnt umber, okay. It just seems it's catching my eye a lot. I think maybe the, the lack of color where you have color going on everything, everywhere. And then it seems like the one thing that doesn't have the color my eye is going on. So as far as the color harmony goes, everything's working really well till I get to these cattails. Mm -hmm. Although I do like the darkness of them. And, you know, a lot of times you're looking at a scene and you don't have to make everything in the scene overall to be perfectly rendered, right? I love the fact that you kind of silhouetted them, right? Yeah. Um, I just feel like maybe, I don't know if it needs more blues in there to be more cohesive with what's going on, um, but it does kind of draw my eye to that. Mm -hmm. And are, are these also like reeds or something going on in here? No, that was my abstract expressionist mood. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, would almost like to see some of these darks brought into some of this to kind of help your eye move in and back. Okay. Um, the one thing about the boat in here, I would like to see you maybe explore and see more reflections of what's going on in here. And maybe that boat just passed very quickly. Um, but as you look at other boats, you know, you'll see would like to see maybe a little bit more of this color in here. It just seemed like you did a little squiggle of a reflection and left it at that. And it would have been nice to maybe, you know, as you look at every part of your painting, explore how can you make this uh, more interesting, um, convey what, what's actually going on in real life in there. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, I think the painting's working pretty well. Good Thank job. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's interesting uh, what you said. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have picked up on some of that, but that's great. I'll, I'll work on that. Okay. Is this the right direction? No, nope, wrong, wrong direction. Wrong direction. <laughs> Story of my life. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and this is um, Yelena's, and she just joined. Paskovich. Yes. So this has a great impressionistic feel about it. Um, you know, as I, as I look into paintings, they're kind of windows into people's personality, right? It's scary what people might look at my paintings and deduct. <laughs> Dark, who knows? Um, but I, I love the expression that's going on in here. And it's a very, um, how do I say it? Um, working in a lot of different directions at one time. Okay, um, sporadic a little bit. I would almost like to see a little more cohesiveness within the shadows um, as the darks because it's like a scattergun effect. Okay, what you have going on, and then maybe I need to step back 20 feet to, to see the whole picture. Um, but it seems like, you know, they're always talking about connecting your darks and your lights within paintings. Um, and that kind of, you know, start with your big shapes, right? And then move backwards from there, if that makes sense. Um, but, you know, like some of the shadows here, I feel like they could be a little darker. You know, shadows coming in from here, shadows coming in from here. Um, everything seems to be a little bit of the same value within here. Um, I think as you get darker in the foreground and move your eye within those shadows as larger design shapes, um, it will allow the, the viewer's eye to really see the hero in the painting. You know, you ask yourself, what is this painting about? You know what I mean? And would it help to highlight some of the buildings, um, some of the houses that are maybe in more light than others, right? So they don't have to, you know, you could tone back maybe some of these buildings here, maybe have this one be your hero. Um, the car is fairly well rendered. I feel like almost it's a little bit too big. I'm not sure. Um, and it seems like the street kind of jags in right here. 
other than that, maybe this tree could be a little bit more grounded, you know, and I think that would help if you had uh, a darker shadow. And remember, you don't have to illustrate everything. You don't have to illustrate that there's a division between the tree trunk and the grass. You can always blur that out, you know, especially towards the edges where it doesn't, you don't need to have crisp details where you can, you know, uh, blur things and fade things towards the edges and then have your center of focus have more crispness to us to it and that would allow the viewer viewer's eye to really get attracted to what you're talking about in the scene but overall I think it's it's the paintings working well and it's it's a good job okay Liz gear Liz gear okay my name is here in Charlotte. hi rich Hello, how are you? Fine, thanks, and you? Good. It's a nice painting. Um, I really like how the colors are working together. Um, the yellows and the toned down reds work nicely with the greens and the blues. I mean, I think overall it's a, a pleasing painting to look at. The one thing that attracts my eye um, as artists and I think as human beings is contrast, right? And this railing keeps drawing my eye. I've looked at this a couple times and it seems to be kind of like a, a design element, right? Where your eye kind of wants to get drawn to it. You know, you do have some nice lines here that help to compete with it, but it doesn't compete at all. You know, if you squint your eyes, you have the very light, you know, nine value of the, of the sky and then a, you know, a two value or one value of, of this. So you could have still put that in and maybe think about toning back the darks to, you know, a five or a six value mm -hmm. or even fading off um, the railing, you know, so it gets lighter and it's not such a uh, eye catch. The yeah. um, the sidewalk is a little bit of a dissection of the painting. You know, you mm -hmm. have this down here, and then you have this kind of just cutting the, the painting off. So in the future, think about, you know, yes, you have this sidewalk, but how can you maybe, you know, leave an area open over here to allow the viewer's eye to come in and still explore the rest of the painting mm -hmm. and not get dissected off from you know enjoying the whole painting but overall I really like how you use your darks in here your darks down here to accent the lights of the tree which is really important because if this dark wasn't that dark that tree wouldn't stand out right mm -hmm. right um, so um really really nice use of you know cools and warms in your darks so good job Okay, thank you. Yeah, I debated whether to paint the railing in or not. So it's sort of <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you feel about it now? Um, probably should have, you know, left it out, I think, perhaps. It's sort of, you know, all the, all the, as you say, made it not quite as dark. So, sort of. So. Yeah, well, we all, we learn from every painting we do, don't we? Yep, that's for sure. So, so. Kudos to you. Okay, thanks. This is uh, Barbara's, is yours? This is Barbara's, I think. No, that's not not. Uh, this not this is mine. Oh, sorry. it's Muriel. Sorry, they were next to each other. Yeah. Sorry, Muriel. That's okay. Hello. Yeah. Sorry, Muriel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oops. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you see this down here? Okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm really digging this painting. I knew exactly where you were standing in the shade where I wasn't. <laughs> the, the smart people stood in the shade. Um, I really like the, um, I think you nailed, you know, that, that blue faded color of the Sears Tower. Um, I think it maybe needs to be more unified, like less of the browns, you know, like in the antennas and stuff. Okay. Um, I do like how, you know, as, as that gets faded back, you don't see a lot of detail. 
if you do see detail, it's maybe a one value shift from the overall blue faded uh, look of it. So I think that was good that you didn't over render it, right? Because that, you know, as I'm looking at this bridge, you know, in the back of my vision, I'm seeing that faded cityscape. And I think that's, um, that's working really well, especially look at how she um, kind of doesn't make this too crisp. Look how crisp this is right here. And look at how your eye gets attracted to that division line, right? This is really nice. The painting's really not about this building right here. And it's not about this building either. It's really about, you know, our center of focus, which comes back into here, which is one of our lightest lights against one of our darkest darks, okay? And, you know, that's a great job um, drawing the viewer's eye into this and holding them there with that light, okay? This could be probably softened up a little bit sort of like how this is softened up. Um, overall, I think the perspective is working fairly well. I think this may be a little bit off. I think, I think as this comes up in here, this vanishing point probably comes back down into here. So this might be a little bit off there. Um, overall, I mean, I think the painting's working really well. I like the, uh, the blues in here. So, might have been able to get a, a few more of the uh, cooler lights in, inside of the shadow and even some even some warms as you look into those shadows but so you uh, don't think it's too uh, too much space in the foreground I like the expressive use um, I think and you had a question whether to add figures walking in there but then it will be in the middle of the road <laughs> yeah I don't I, I, I wouldn't do that. Okay. Um, it, it would be tough to get them to come off without being yeah. just having every, everybody want to look at those two figures. Okay. Yes. I like how you played around with the foreground, got a little bit of, uh, abstract, okay. um, uh, expressionistic with that. So you can have large areas of foregrounds and backgrounds where you just get abstract and it, it it comes off and I think this is working fairly well could have almost gotten a little bit more abstract with the edge of the shadows here um so it's not as as hard of a division because you know as you're going away from your center of focus um I think you could afford to do that a little bit but uh yeah maybe a little bit more detail these are kind of looking like um children's blocks that are plopped down there yeah you know, as, um, you know, as a compliment, you know, you have this violet blue and then this orange. So that in itself is going to vibrate against each other. So if you're going to have it vibrate like that, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe tone it down or add some basic details, right? You don't have to illustrate every single window. There's no window though, but it's like, no. Okay. Is that, but I can, I can, I can show some bricks. Maybe there's a, it's like a brick, um, brick wall. Of brick. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, overall, pretty good painting, though. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yep. This is Barbara's. <laughs> this is Barbara's. Yes, that's mine. So, are you are you waiting for me to say something? No, I was just looking at a, a All right. notes. Um, All right. So yeah, I'm really digging. I like the lead in. I think the perspective is working fairly well. Mm -hmm. I really like your your bushes down here and how you push these greens. Right. Uh -huh. I think that's really important to have your foliage be very grounded. Uh huh. Um, I I remember that day, and I remember how darks the darks were underneath the foliages yeah um almost i mean it especially as the sun got higher in the sky the shadows yeah. got deeper right yeah so they were like you know almost almost a greened black uh-huh um so i really like that i do feel like maybe you could have pushed this 
red tree here, some darks in there though at the same time. Yeah. You know, in into here, and I thought I think that would would help to to allow the viewer's eye to kind of go into the painting more. Okay. Um, as far as this pole in the middle, I'm not sure we actually need that pole. Mm -hmm. I was looking at it and kind of blocking it out earlier and saying, what would the painting look like without it? And, uh -huh. you know, is the, you know, obviously we have our artistic license where we can add things and subtract things however we wish, right? Yes. Uh -huh. When I'm doing a scene like this, I look at it and I say, is adding that pole in the middle of the painting going to help or hurt the painting? Well, I think I kept it because of the shadow in the foreground. I, I was too concerned about too much foreground. And that was the best answer that I could do to abstract it. But then, you know, the top of the pole really didn't fit within the painting. And then I got kind of screwed up. Right, right. I see a lot of painters. Um, so if, if you're it too concerned about how, you know, let's say there's too much space in the foreground, you can always introduce a shadow from a tree or a pole or something else going on. You know, there's nothing saying that this whole scene isn't, um, there isn't a canopy of trees over it that's gonna create yeah. a shadow in here that's gonna allow you to, um, you know, break up that area. Okay. Um, I see a lot of artists do that, <clears throat> that um, they just make up shadows however they want, and then they look at the shadow as its own individual design element, mm -hmm. right? And, and think about that when you're doing trees, too. You don't have to replicate the tree exactly how you see it, even if it hurts the painting because it's a bad-looking tree or how it fits into it. Take the general essence of the tree and compose it to fit within the scene to complement the scene, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, other than that, I would watch this transition of the the light in this building. Uh huh. Okay, so as you're coming up and they kind of meet right here. Yeah. I would watch that bad transition right there. It's kind of a juxtaposition that you could have avoided, you know, if you had brought this building up here or even down below it or brought the light pole up or something like that. Okay. Um, overall, I think the painting's working pretty well. Okay, thanks. I'm, I, was at, I was curious about the center developing something more interesting and, in, you know, going in under the viaduct there. Right, right. Uh, and no, I wonder, get it. Yeah, I uh, mean, if you, look, if you look at this, if this painting here was just a black void it wouldn't yeah. nearly be as interesting. Yeah, so I'm... what she's got going on here really adds to the painting. So yeah. I, I agree, you could have had, you know, something going on in here, even if it was suggested, yeah. right? Instead of I having wanted... just a big dark area. Well, I was trying to make it dark when I was there, like hurry and make it dark. But then when I looked at it, I thought, uh should have been a little more interesting. You could always go back in there, right? Yes, okay. And it's yeah. still a plein air painting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll give you yeah. a pass on that, Barb. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. No, so, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's a good suggestion. I would go back in and explore that a little bit. It wouldn't take much to add a little something. I think it would really help uh, to make the painting. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, thanks. You bet. Jill Zilkes. Okay. Yeah, I really like this painting. Um, the one one thing, I mean, kudos, the rock reflections are killer, right? Who doesn't like reflections like that? I mean, they really come off across very nicely. Um, the color usage and the change of uh, the shifting in um, temperature in the water is really nice, okay? Look how dark the darks are back here. And then you have these, these beautiful um, green blues and then umbers and stuff in here. That's coming across very nicely. Um, I mean, absolutely nailed this tree color. 
you know, it's like a coniferous uh, evergreen thing that's going on in there. And uh, it, it's a beautiful color. And that's uh, getting pushed by the, the oranges and umbers behind it. That's uh, nicely done. I think maybe could have probably broken some of these things up. I would like to even see this getting broken up. I don't mind it coming into here as a sharp edge, but maybe bring it back a little bit and start loosening it up as you come towards the edge. Um, it's really a nice lead in with the rocks and the variety of shapes of the rocks. Now that's really important is to not replicate your shapes. It's very easy when you're painting rocks or stones or something that seems to be fairly uh, repetitive. Um, it's easy to just paint them in and next thing you know, they look like twin sisters or twin brothers of each other. So there's a nice variety of um, stone shapes here, which is nice. Um, couple points. One, I feel like the perspective on the roof is off. Now, I, I don't know this building, so maybe it, it does kind of look like that, but I can't help but feel like, like this is a very big overhang and this has no overhang. So maybe, I don't know if this needs to come in a little bit down farther. Actually, the point is, I struggled with that, is actually way out there like that. But um, it's true that on the left-hand side of the building, I think it needs a, like a longer shadow to make it seem like it's coming out more. Right, right. But it does kind of like jut out over. Yeah, it does. It does kind of draw my attention as far as uh, perspective or you know buildings mm. go. Um, I feel like so our light source is coming from left to right, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I feel like this side of the building could be a little bit darker. I thought so too. Now that I okay. see it, yeah. and especially because you have such dark shadows here. This is telling me that this is kind of like a midday scene, right? A sunny midday scene. I feel like these blues of these pylons and stuff like that need to really um, get a little bit darker and less intense, unless they were really were that blue. Um, but I feel like overall, this whole side of the building could get darker and still keep some highlights, right? On these edges. And I think that will help to um, push and pull that building um, to the viewer, allow the viewer to get back into space a little bit more. Um, even maybe the roof, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as you get, as you see the shadow side of the roof, you're probably going to get more blues in there um, reflecting the sky, right? Mm -hmm. So that could get a little bit darker and maybe a little cooler. Overall, I think um, it's a very nicely done painting. Um, question, in order to achieve the shadows on the right-hand side of the building, I started out as a watercolor, so I'm all about like glazing and things like that. Would uh -huh. you recommend, could I put just like a, like a blue or, you know, dark glaze over that whole side, or should I paint like each individual panel over this again? Is, uh, yeah. is this oil painting? It is. Uh-huh. That might it might be it might be tough to glaze that personally because yeah. um, okay. what are what kind of glaze are you going to use are you going to use a warm glaze or are you going to use a cool glaze right probably cool yeah I would think if it's in shadow I would say um, you can always try to glaze it and That's in true. a day or so it'll be dry and if you don't yeah. like it you can always go opaque over that so true. use that mm -hmm. as a learning experiment right. Mm -hmm. Um, once once you get like you know thick with your paint back into here, then it, it might you might have to wait a while before you go back in and glaze it. Um, but yeah, that would be a good experiment for you, you know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, great job. Thank you. This is um, Karen Kariko. She's not here, but but we can we should still um. I'm do here. It. Oh, you are here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, okay. <laughs> I was going through the list and I didn't see you. I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I really like this painting. Was this, uh, is this oil or watercolor? Oil? 
Acrylic. Acrylic. Okay, gotcha. Um, I really love this tree shape and the darkness, you know, uh, is very brave to, to put the dark tree in a landscape like this, but it's, it's almost necessary to make it work. So great job there. Um, I like the variety in the tree. And this is really important is that you allow the tree to open up. So you're allowing the tree to absorb the background and the viewer's eye to see through the tree. You have nice, you know, sky holes, even though they're seeing the water or whatever. Um, and you're not, it's not too bright, right? So see how she didn't replicate this color here. Otherwise against that dark, it would look extra light. Um, so that's really nice, nice backlight going on behind the trees. Um, beautiful purples, and then they play off of the greens and the oranges, okay? This tree is really, really juicy, and it plays nicely. It, it, I think overall, the scene has a really nice sun-absorbed feel, and I, I think that's, that's working very well as a painting. Um, you didn't get too detailed in the background, which is great because it's really not about the background and, and yeah and I was afraid it would come forward too easily <laughs> so yeah no I mean you used cools which is great you know you still have some worms in there but you know overall it's fairly cool back here especially look how this division right here you got even cooler so that allows to you know that separation in, in atmosphere to happen um, as far as suggestions go, I think, now is this like a spillway? Yeah, it's like, a, it's a dam. It's like a stone dam. So it uh -huh. is, it's almost like steps right there. Right, right. Kind of a difficult subject, isn't it? Yeah, it is hard. <laughs> yeah, I've always had difficulties with those because um, it's hard to pick any one aspect out and render it and then go back and try to render something else. You almost have to take the general um, architectural feel of it and create it yourself without getting too, you know, drawn into individual details of it. Um, I think overall it's working fairly well. It does get, I don't know, maybe confusing for me in here. Okay. Which, Wait, um, should I get a little detailed in part of it maybe? So it's real more obvious that it's water. Yeah, that's something that when you sit down, you know, I don't know if this is close by you or you have good pictures of it, but um, really, real. I think it's like, I would say overall the painting, the feel of the painting, I think is pretty much done. And I feel like maybe this isn't as done. Okay. Almost, almost like it needs for you to really go to that next level and look at it and say, how can I make this believable? with the fewest number of strokes without getting overly worked because you don't want to ruin the nice looseness of this tree and this tree in the foreground with all of a sudden getting too tight. So there is no magic pill that you can take that I can give you to say, oh, all you have to do is this and that's going to make the painting more successful. It, it's, it's going to be really uh, observation. Okay. That was a lot of no help, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to take a chance and try something. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, overall, I think the painting's working very well right now. So just a little bit more. Don't be afraid. Okay, thank you. Great job. This is me. Whose is this? Lori, sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> William Ewers. Is... Lori who? <laughs> yeah so I really like the um it almost has like a spotlight feel to it where you know your hero that that sailboat is kind of like lit up a little bit and I think that's really cool though the, I think the major comment I had when I was looking at this before was you have to ask yourself, you know, in any scene, you know, especially um, seascapes, is it about the water or is it about the sky? Okay. 
because you have a lot of sky in there and there's really not much going on. Look how beautifully detailed and, and with how much expression you have in the water. And then you have a fairly void area on almost half of the rest of the painting. If I took this horizon line and I moved it up here, right? Now the painting's about the water, okay? Because then the majority of that, and then you could explore all this nice stuff you have going on in here and get more into the reflection of your hero, okay? Whereas unless you were going in here and you had some beautiful clouds to, you know, help, it, it's almost like the tale of, of two paintings, right? You have almost no detail in the upper left and then you have extreme fun and, and playfulness and detail in the rest of the painting. So if this was mine, I would make, make that decision and say, um, let's, you know, either bring the horizon line down and make it about the sky, right? With the beautiful- You know clouds. what, can you say that again, my, my computer froze? I would say um, either move the horizon line up or move the horizon line down. So you're either gonna make it about the sky, you know, and if it was one of those days where there was no clouds there and you really didn't wanna make up clouds, then concentrate on making it about the water, right? And uh, move that horizon line up and then um, get asymmet more asymmetrical with your horizon. You know, it's, it's a little bit too close to the middle of the painting. Um, so could I do that, you think, but still keeping the trees where they are? As far as right now? Um, no, because you would basically, basically you would be shifting all the boats and everything up with it. Um, I mean, just think about that for future paintings, right? Um, maybe even the next painting to do on a harbor, you know, do that. Put your horizon line way up here, okay? And then have fun and look at that water and, and everything that's going on, all the colors and value shifts and everything going on in the water. Um, I've seen some very beautiful paintings that were, you know, horizon lines were way up here. And I've seen ones that were, you know, way down here. But that that's not going to be about the ground or what's going on on the ground if the horizon line is that low. You know, when you get into cityscapes and you're at street level and that horizon line, you put that horizon line very low, all of a sudden now it's about all those huge skyscrapers and all those buildings going on above you, right? If you took that horizon line and you move that horizon line all the way up, you couldn't get away with showing all that detail and stuff about the cityscape because now all of a sudden it's about the ground. Now it's about the people or the street or the, the crosswalks and stuff like that, right? So. I think that's the biggest takeaway of this is, is what is the painting about? And that's going to dictate where you put your horizon line. Okay. I have a question about the trees. I was wondering if I should scumble them and make them a little fainter. Yes. That was one of my um, comments that I wrote down was I wish um, you allowed a little bit more sky into it. A little bit of scumbling wouldn't hurt probably just to break it up a little bit. Um, as I look at it and squint my eyes, it just, it kind of makes a little bit too much of a hard edge in there. You could probably even um, bring this mast up. I think that would help to take care of some of that sky because those masts are very large, right? Um, yeah, that would definitely help. And also as you look at boats, really pay attention to that dark edge that comes that kind of dissects the boat and the water. Right now, it almost looks like there's um, turbulence in front of the boat. So look, if you have a picture of it, go back and look at it or even go to the harbor and look from life. And you'll see that really dark division between the boat and the water. And that kind of helps to ground the boat to the water. But nice job. I like it. Okay, thanks. This is Marcy's. I can smell the chocolate now. <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so yeah, I used to work um, not too far away from this neighborhood. Oh, <laughs> uh, right where the L tracks went around the building. And I remember many a days getting out of work and that wind would be just right. And all I would smell is like fudge. <laughs> it was delicious. Um, so I really like what you have going on in the background with the city. That's really cool. Um, the coolness, you know, the little bit of yellow going on in the sky, I think that really helps to set it off, right? It's mm -hmm. loose enough where it's not drawing your attention too much. Um, in contrast, I think the Blummer sign may be a little bit too much. And I'll tell you a story. My wife was walking by as I was looking at this on my laptop and she said, got to get rid of the sign. <laughs> and then she just walked away. I said, yeah, yeah, you're always right. Um, maybe it's not so detailed and maybe take that red, maybe tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's um, nice. Right now, every I could turn away and look at it and my eye automatically goes to this, right? And it's important, you know, because it's about it's it's about time and place, right? This is about kind of like where you were, you know, at that factory and stuff. Um, but I think you can, I think you can blur it a little bit. I think you can um, take some of the intensity away from that red. Okay, the only other red you have is on this jersey, so you have that going on. But overall, you have a fairly cool painting going on, right? Yes, I do. And then a very strong warm. So that might be something to work on. Um, you don't have to, you know, describe every cursive of every letter. Um, so you can always, you know, experiment with that, try to tone it back or blur it back a little bit, see if it works. If it doesn't work, you can always bring it back to what you had. Um, I feel like this car, you know, one of the most important things about drawing cars and cityscapes is really paying attention to how dark the dark is underneath. And like, you see how you have this little bit of light right here? Uh -huh. There's always light going on underneath the car, especially when you're standing on street level. So I feel like the car, like this need, this fender needs, or uh, what do you call that? The side of the car needs to come up a little bit. You need to see a little bit more light under here and almost, Need to see the uh, the blackness of that distant um, front right tire. Okay. Uh, I feel like your perspective is a little bit off on it, a little bit um, scrunchy as far as cars go, but uh, not bad. I think it's a smart car. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, and that sign was the last thing I do, and you know, red. It was like, oh my god. And I, I tried to put the blue, but it's got to dry and I have to darken that because it's in the shade, so. Mm. Um, I have a question, Should would it be make it stronger if um, the lower right was even darker? Would it hold the viewer in better? Like where your name is? Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I think I, how do I get, Lori, can I get rid of this little bar here? Can you see this bar which, at the bottom? Bar? Of your, oh, your tabs bar, your fa the where your yeah. tabs are. Um, I think you'd have to close all that off previously. I think. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it kind of interrupts the painting, but yeah, you you know you probably could because you know the values that you have going on in the street here are about the same value as you have going on in, in the uh, background. Okay. Mm -hmm. The one thing I did um, after my demo the other day is I brought it back and I actually lightened up the distant buildings. Um, I looked at them and I said, they're a, what did I say? A three to four value at the time. And I didn't really nail it down in the demo. And when I came back, I, I brought it back to a three to four value. And I think that really helped the painting. Now, I think your values are, are pretty, they're working fairly well here. But you have the same values kind of going on all in the front right. here as the backgrounds mm -hmm. too. So yeah, if you wanted to play around with that, I don't think it would hurt. Um, you know, even darks in here. Um, think about your crosswalks and 
the importance of those. Um, I did, now that we're on crosswalks, I wanted to show you guys something. This is uh, Jeremy Mann. Um, he does really great cityscapes, uh, M-A-N-N. -N. And I don't know if many of you have heard of him, but this is a great example of Can't him using crosswalks. Look, are you showing us the example? Yes. Can you uh -huh. see it? Uh -huh. So look at that crosswalk oh, and look at how much um, perspective that he has just within this crosswalk, okay? Now, if that doesn't set you right on the ground, right in front of it, like, I don't know what does because he's got a great receding crosswalk and it's concentric. You can see the perspective within that. And that's, it's a very difficult thing to do, especially when you're playing air is to nail that down. Um, but really think about that as a design element. You know, if you have this crosswalk here, you know, really have it receding, really have it getting large as it gets towards you, like you're standing right on the beginning of it. Um, and that's going to really help to bring you into the painting. I felt like I needed to do something more with value because it, it turns out that the car is, you know, that's the darkest thing right now. So, um, and that was not my intention. Yeah, you know, if you said the Blomer uh, factory was in shadow, then make it in shadow because right now it's not coming across like it's in shadow. You know, um, if you're going to make this a dark shape, then work on, you know, trying to connect some other dark shadows or shapes going on. You know, it doesn't mean like like um, the conversation we had before about there could be a canopy of trees above you. Well, there could be shadows from other buildings, other bridges and other things going on in here mm -hmm. that you can just make up that you can help to, you know, connect things, maybe even strengthen the values within here. So there's more of a differentiation between uh, this semi foreground and the background. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I think that. Yeah, I, I think, think so. Darks, darks at the base of the trees will help. Yeah, this whole thing, even the darks on the um, edges of the curbs and everything else. Um, yeah, that's it's a, be a really good plan. But good job. Thank you, Rich. Yep. This is Linda Brown. Linda Brown. Okay. So I really like the, uh, I almost, this is so large on my screen. I almost have to step back to see it. I'm squinting my eyes. Um, I'm really digging the color harmony going on in the shadows and stuff. It's, it's kind of like a, a mid to high key painting. Okay. Overall. And I feel, I feel like it's an underpainting right now, almost like it's 60% done. And that it almost needs some juicier colors. Um, get more bold with your, with your application of paint. You know, if you're going to make this, you know, kind of like a purplish uh, ochre, you know, uh, get in there and make it that. Don't scrumble it in. We can still see a lot of this uh, canvas showing through. I, I feel like it needs a little bit more um, application of paint to help to pull this off. I don't mind what's going on in the background too much, but I feel like um, some of this looks very unfinished. Like, you know, there's, it, it's a forest of dead trees with no leaves on it and could use a, you know, canopy a foliage going on in here, you know, as you've seen some paths that go into the distance and that the trees are kind of like overhanging it and you can get, um, you know, keep some of your lightest, you know, beautiful uh, yellow greens going on in here. Now this is going to be offset by whatever darks you have going on, right? So if you have some dark foliage coming on in here, pushing your darks on the underside of this foliage here and in here, that's gonna make this yellow green stand out even more, okay? So I feel like it's, it's a really good start and I feel like you, you know maybe you need like 40% more um, application, but definitely you're on the right track as far as um, values and color harmony. I think it's working really well. 
Okay, this is uh, Karen Kennedy. There yep. was a question with this, wasn't there? How do I um, loosen, loosen up? up more? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so my question to you is how do you start your painting? I don't put enough underpainting and do, do enough underpainting. And then it ends up so light. So I'm putting dark over light. And yeah, so I ap apply, I continue to try to apply color to give enough base, like my trees. Yeah, so I think I'm, I'm having a difficult time getting enough paint on the palette. Paint on the um is on the um, canvas, and work you put with a that. small amount of uh, paint on your palette. Yes, very small. I'm very stingy with my paint. My All oils. right. So next next time, put three times as much paint as you <laughs> normally do. Okay. Okay. I've had some people in my workshop that go there and they put little dabs of paint on. Their yeah. Palette, you know, all the way around. And I'm like, where's your paint? Like that's one brush stroke, right? For a lot of people. Well, you know, I'm kind of stingy. I said, well, how much did it cost you to take this workshop? Put some paint on your palette, <laughs> you know? It's not, yeah, it's not a cost thing. It's a caution thing. Yeah. You know, like, you know, not, I don't want to have too much material to work with. Yeah. I mean, I should probably be doing watercolor the way I work with oils. I thin them out too much. So. Yeah. So I feel like um, part of the um, answer to the question of how do I loosen up is, and that's why I ask, how do you start your painting? You know, if you're going to start with a pencil and a ruler, and I'm not saying you're doing that, but for someone that does do that, they're automatically signaling to their brain that this is going to be a tight painting, right? Right. Now, it's pretty rare. I have seen people do it. I saw someone do it a couple of weeks ago at a plain air event where they, they had basically a ruler and, and they were drawing it in. And I was like, wow, I didn't know you uh, drew your stuff in like that. I've never seen this person paint like this before. And I know their work and their work isn't that tight. So it really took me by surprise. But she was trying to dial in the perspective of it. When I saw the finished painting, you never would have been able to tell that she used a ruler, you know, and was that tight with it in the beginning. For most people, when they, when they get tight in the beginning of the painting, they can't get away from being tight in the ending of the painting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say get loose in the beginning stages of your painting. That doesn't mean get real thick with your paint you can, you know, you're always working thin to thick, right? And because once you work thick and you have big impostos on there, it's going to be really hard to do anything on top of it before it dries. Um, so get loose, you know, get washy, start scrubbing things in and kind of build it up from there. That automatically will help you to um, stay loose. And then you start dialing in, you know, what's important about the painting, okay? Um, well, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my drawing. My, yeah, if it's, if I'm too loose to begin with, I'm afraid. And I don't use a ruler only towards the end when I want to clean up all the lines. But I'm always right. afraid I'm going to lose the, the, you know, the drawing of it. The, yeah, if I'm too yeah. loose to begin with. Well, I mean, for instance, and I'm not saying everybody works like this or anybody works like this, but I don't usually draw like, you know, if I was doing this, I wouldn't be drawing in hardly anything. I would be using a brush and, and doing the basic shapes of the building and correcting, you know, in my mind, stepping back and saying, is this the basic shape of the building? Is the perspective of the building working correctly? Um, but I'm not, you know, drawing everything in, you know, work on your basic shapes. Okay, that would be step one. Once you're satisfied with what you have going on as far as uh, perspective and everything, then just look at the basic shapes, the big shapes of everything. Look at your shadow shapes. Look at the light shapes of the side of the building and the dark shapes, you know, the shadow areas, and just start dialing those in. Don't look at it as a building. Look at each individual area. 
is it cool or is it warm? Is it light or is it dark? And just put it in. You know, I, I don't remember if it was Matisse or which uh, artist said it, but you know, he was saying like, when you're drawing in orange, don't draw in orange, right? You're not drawing in orange. You're just observing the colors and values shifts of an object. Yeah, when I think that can help done, my work a lot. Yeah. Yeah, when you get done with it, it's going to come across as an orange, even though you're not even trying to draw an orange, you know. So look at, try to break, you know, a complex building like this down into the basic shapes. And even if your darks remain darks and you don't bring anything out of it, you know, there's a mystery in what's in a shadow or the blurred edge. Um, as you fade off, right? That adds that adds mood and expression to a painting. Don't feel like every line of every tree or every corner of every building has to be defined. Right. Okay? Uh, allow the viewer to make up some of the uh, puzzle and you know intrigue of the whole scene, and that engages uh, viewers so that they become a part of it. And to be honest with you, you're going to sell a lot more paintings if you allow you know, the, the future patrons to uh, play a part in the imagination of the painting, okay? Mm -hmm. um, overall, really quickly, I think, you know, the human eye is, is attracted to these design elements and how stark these things you have going on with the darks and the lights. Um, my eye is just automatically attracted to that. Um, I understand the architecture of some of these things and they have that going on, but you could think about um, maybe not making that, you know, the darks is dark against the lights because it does kind of take away from some of the darks that you have under the eaves and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Deb Page Jackson. Hi, Deborah. I don't know if she's here. Don't think she is. Don't you just love the um oh nope, she might well no that may not be here. Uh there's a Deb here, but I think it's Deb Berenstein. I love the color that's going on in this. Um you can tell this this artist looked at her scene and really tried to learn from what was in front of her. Okay. You know, with the variety of leaf shapes, um, the warm greens and the cool greens of these conifers. And even look how light these distant trees are going on in the background. I think maybe this could be broken up a little bit more um, as far as, you know, sky holes or irregular features going on. Right now, I think this is kind of coming across kind of too hard edged. You have your sky and then you have everything below the sky. Allow um, the sky to penetrate some of these openings and, th and that will allow it to soften up. But you can also come back in here with other uh, details that are like half as dark as what you have going on here. And that will help to soften up and uh, really help that out. This is like very contrasty compared to the sky. But I do like the, um, it looks like you have splatters going on. Um, it, it's just a riot of flowers, which is pretty cool. Um, so overall, really nice watercolor. Is that Howard? And Howard, I watched Howard do a little bit of this. This was on one of his homemade panels. <clears throat> Don't you love the looseness of this and the brush strokes? I mean, I love reading into other artists' work and seeing their hand in it. And, um, you know, brush strokes, dirty brushes, oops, uh, dirty brushes going on here. Um, it's really cool. I think he said this was unfinished and he was going to finish it later. So obviously, take this guy color being below the bridge is a little bit confusing right now. But if you took some of these nice darks that you have going on in here uh, and, and brought this all under here, which would ground the whole thing, I think there would be some really interesting. I'd be interested to see what 
what he comes up with um, after he starts adding some more darks and other things going on <clears throat> below the bridge. I would watch your spacing a little bit on these. Okay. And, you know, if this is a bridge that's going away from you, pay attention to the diminishing size between the railings. Um, those are, that's really important, um, especially where we were painting last weekend. You know, there was, if you hold your brush up and you look at the space between two of these railings in the front, and then you hold it, see what the difference is. You know, it's like a third of the size or half of the size of the spacing. So that really allows the perspective to work. Um, if you don't, then it looks like you're looking at it straight on. But I, I dig what's going on. I would watch some of these um, intense greens below here. But that's just a start. Once you get all the different darks in, then you'll start to dial everything up. But nice, cool looking piece. This is Priscilla's. Priscilla? Is Priscilla, Priscilla's here, right? No? I don't think so. No. Yeah, I really, I think this piece is working fairly well. This is an example of some of the cool um, graffiti art. I don't know, would you even call that graffiti art? They were, it was um, organized, it looked. <laughs> they were really nice. Um, but yeah, that's really cool what's going on. What I really like about this painting is the light areas going on here, this backlight area, you know, so this kind of creates this um, center of focus that's working pretty well. I don't know what's going on with this light area by the uh, truck, I think. It's a little bit confusing. I feel like this dark area needs to come across a little bit more um, and having such a bright light underneath the um, truck is a little bit confusing to me. And it looks like maybe the shadow area's got a little bit, I don't know, black. I don't know if you use black, but it looks, it is the darkest dark. I don't mind that, but I wouldn't mind seeing some of that replicated on the underside of this because the underside of the bridge isn't going to catch as much uh, reflected light as on the street. Okay. You're going to catch more of the sky blues that are um, infiltrating the shadows under here, as opposed to um, the dark umbers that you're going to get on the underside of the bridge. So don't don't be afraid to push some of the darks in here. Um, right now, you know, as I squint my eye, this is definitely the darkest area right here. Um, probably could even help with some more darks coming into here. And maybe that shadow as it's coming down, this could be a little bit darker in here. And that would start to create. So you could connect your shadows in here, almost into here and into here. So that would be a nice lead in into there. So think about connecting some more of your shadows. But um, in general, I like how it's working and um, how the, the lightest areas are, are backlit in here. I think that's pretty cool. So nice job. Uh, this is Hugh. I don't let's see if he's here. Who is this? Is? Hugh Nicholson. Okay. No, I really like the style that's going on here. Um, it's, it's something that we haven't really talked about uh, much tonight was style. You know, like people ask, you know, how do I how do I find out what my style is? Um, I think your style finds you. The more you paint and the less you think about what your style is, the more your style is going to find you, right? Style says a lot about how our brains work, I think. Um, someone who is um, ADD, for instance, you know, and is all over the place, that, that is reflected in their art. Someone who's an architect or someone who's methodical and engineer, you know, I, I, uh, 
work with a student who's an engineer and it's so hard to get them to not think about, you know, putting everything in a box or drawing straight lines with everything. Um, and you have to understand that, you know, my style is not going to be anyone else's style. Your style is going to be unique. And so when you take a workshop, yeah, be influenced and learn things from the workshop teacher. But it doesn't mean that you have to try to replicate what their style is. Your style will find you. And this right here, you know, is, is kind of a cool style that's going on. And it, it's hard to explain, but you just look at it and you say, this is different than what we've seen tonight, right? And, and I'm digging what's going on. And I'll tell you a couple more things I like about it. I think his observation of the buildings is really cool. Um, as you look at these buildings, you know, even in the, the mirrored reflection of what you have going on in here, you do see the lighter aspect of the sky in the background. Imagine these buildings that they're just mirrors that are standing up straight. Some of them are curved like this one. Okay. And, uh, you know, they're just on a different scale, but they're reflecting what's behind you. So he's done a really nice job of um, observing what's going on in these buildings and, and replicating that. Um, the dark shape underneath the bridge makes this painting work. Take away that dark shape and, and this painting, you know, doesn't work as well at all without it and the dark shapes on the uh, back girders. That really helps to push this color up. I notice this color, like it's not too intense. It's kind of toned down. And this color against the green color, which is also toned down, that they kind of work as complements, okay? Um, the lighting it, that he has going on here is really beautiful. This really comes across well. The one thing I would suggest is pay attention to your uh, wave pattern. We talk a lot about how railings go away in the distance and how things diminish and stuff like that. And you have to pay attention to um, the waves are a little bit too similar in size as they recede in value. You know, even if you have these really cool wave patterns in here going away to almost no detail back here, um, that would really help the scene. Overall, I think this painting's working very well. So it's a, it's a really nice job. And that is it. That's it. That's right. it. That is that is it. And wow, good, good, um, good timing. Did I move along? You moved along and you still got it all in there. Good. Yeah. Um, so a couple things from the demo the other day, we had, uh, or maybe that was at lunch, we were talking about Christian Hook. And I don't know if you guys have heard about him, uh, H-O-O-K, I think. And I think he's like Argentine. Tinian or I, I don't know but look up his work um and you'll see how he breaks things up um not not afraid to get very detailed with some aspects of the painting and also get super abstract as he moves away from things and breaks things up with color um if you wanted to do any homework look up his his name along with Jeremy Mann and his uh beautiful cityscapes and if you want to loosen up, look at some of those guys. And I think that um, that would be good uh, study in, in the future. Christian Hook was very interesting, the way sections would just like disappear. And I thought that was really it was intriguing. Yeah, yeah. Just bizarre. You know, when you look at paintings and, and I'm talking about, you know, the psyche of the artist, you look at it and people get so involved in the, his paintings and they say, well, I don't I want to understand this artist. Right. Like, what is this artist thinking and, and why does he do that and everything? And I think that's why he's he's a big seller, you know, and he commands really good money for his paintings. And it's because there's a lot of intrigue in it. And um, I think that's kind of what we should all try to strive for is a little bit more intrigue within our paintings and not so constrained. That is good advice. Because I think with plein air, you can get very constrained because you're trying to capture it you know and you spend too much time thinking about capturing it 
instead of just painting. You know what I mean? Yeah, I struggle with that all the time. Um, trying to loosen up while I'm in planer. Seems like when I come back to the studio, it's easy for me to loosen up. But when I go out, and I don't know if that's my illustration background, but it's the challenge of trying to um, capture, you know, what's in front of me while forgetting sometimes that I need to put more style and, and looseness into it that, you know, that, that people really enjoy seeing. Does anybody have any questions for Rich? Give me that second name again, Christian Hook, and who's the other one? Uh, Jeremy Mann, M-A-N-N. -N. Okay. And Jeremy Mann has a, a weekly email that he sends out. And if you go to his, um, his website, I think it's redrabbit.com or something like that, you can sign up. It's like 25 cents a week for his email, so it's like, what, $12 a year? He takes that money and he's, I don't know, building a school with it or something like that. But um, he, he gets a little bit rambly with his stuff, but overall the quality of his figures, landscapes, everything he touches is brilliant. I mean, he's one of the finest artists I think working today. Um, for 25 cents a week, I think it's well worth um, signing up for his email. I didn't know he had an email, and that's good to know because I've I've followed his uh, cityscapes in the past <clears throat> before he got into his figurative work, and have been very impressed by them. And they're like monochromatic sometimes, but there's a lot of light and dark going on. With yeah, him. he um he does studies now that are monochromatic. He actually stopped doing cityscapes. Yeah, um, he got to a point where where they were so sought after, uh, he felt like it was defining himself. I think a little bit too much, so he said, "I'm done doing cityscapes." So imagine getting so successful and getting so well known um, for doing a particular you know subject or in a particular style, and then at the top of your game saying, "I'm done," and then moving on. I mean, that's that's an artist right there. <laughs> but he still does his design series, which is basically monochromes of the city, which are beautiful in her own right yeah great suggestion so else anything to say? well rich thank you so very very much thank you Rich. Um, lots of thank yous in the chat from everyone and um it was a great critique thank you very good thank you thank you very much very well, helpful everyone for uh submitting paintings and for those that came out to the uh, demonstration i appreciate it sure thank you see you soon yeah. bye. 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 bye bye thank you Ron.